So I want to talk about um, modeling a face using highlights and shadows. Um, this is the original photo from our albums and the first thing I would do is duplicate the layer. Go to image adjustment desaturate to make sure there's no residual color left in the photo. Um, then I would go to image adjustment levels and set my levels. And this one, I'm not going to go as high. I'm not going to go that far with it. I'm going to keep it right around in there. I think if I go too far, it's going to cause a blowout of the whites. And I might adjust my midtones a little bit. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, after this, I would make repairs and, and uh, you know, fix some of these lines and things, but I'm going to ignore that for now. Just want to show you on this face. Um, normally, I use a color from my swatches that I really like for my base coat, and then um, I usually just pretty much randomly pick a second coat, um, a second color. The second color is usually based on a variation of the first color. I just go darker and more saturated for the second coat. Now obviously this is a, not going to work um, as is, but this is where I always start. And then uh, on that second coat, I usually turn the opacity down to somewhere between 10, 30 percent, somewhere around in there until it's pleasing. On this particular face um, photo, I'm actually going to turn down my base coat, I think, a little bit as well. So it's just a little too bright for the photo. I don't want to turn it down too far, but that's 83 percent. And then my second coat may be around 33, 30, 30, 31, somewhere around in there. Now, this is okay. Um, that's without that second layer and that's with. This is okay. Uh, but then to, to model the face where it doesn't look quite as flat, um, I would take a new layer, turn it to soft light, now this is, it is actually dodging and burning without using the dodge and burn tool. It's still considered dodging and burning. You're just using color instead. Um, so there should be a highlight here and you can see that there, this is a little bit lighter here. Anything that, that projects forward should have a highlight on it. So the light hits certain places on a face. Right down the center of the nose that that sticks out the tips of the nostrils but not in between those. Uh, there should be a dark area in between there. Um, here on the the cheeks it's usually kind of an upside down triangle shape. The light hits uh, the tip of the chin. And the light hits there. And you get a really small brush here. Uh, right above the upper lip. And maybe even a little on the cupid's bow. Uh, directly under the eyebrow and these are places that the sun hits or the light hits. It's such a small photo I'm having trouble getting the right size brush but these are places the light will hit. So once you have that um, take your opacity turn it way down. That is 
9, 10, 11, somewhere around in there. 12%. And now I'm going to shut that off and back on. Uh, maybe I want it a little bit more than that. Let's try 15%. Off and back on. So that just set a little bit of light on, on her face. And honestly, I think maybe I need to hit right here on her bottom lip a little bit where the light is hitting. And then I'll take a second layer, um, change to soft light, and I might even add another highlight here and there on the very brightest parts of a person's face. Hit that bottom lip again. Maybe the very top of the cheek very tip of the nose and the tops of the nostrils again and then again turn that down that's without it and that's with it is a very subtle difference but to me it, it, it means all the world it makes a huge result um, and then I'm on a new layer set to soft light. I'm just going to pick this uh, ashy type brown. It's kind of a, a desaturated brownish color. And I'm going to put that where I think it's the darkest. So right along the side of the nose and the eye socket um, where the light is blocked, the nostrils underneath the nose. Um, that might be enough for this particular photo. Maybe maybe a spot or two here. I'm not sure if I want that outlined like that or not. Um, let's, let's erase that back. And then again, we'll take the opacity, turn that down. That's 32%. That's without it. That's with it. Um, so it's not a stark difference, but I really think it adds to the dimension of the face. And then for me, I think people should have a little bit of red in their cheeks. And that's just my taste. Some people don't like it. They think it might look like makeup. Um, I don't think it looks like makeup because I put it on so light. Uh, turn that way down. That's four uh, percent. It just to me puts a little bit of color in her face, and I want to put just a touch of it here on her temples as well. That's a really low percentage. And then uh, we'll make a new layer, set to soft light, get a little small brush, and I'm going to do the same with her mouth. Turn that down just to put some color in her lips. Now this is a um, a simple one. I didn't add any yellows, blues, and greens, which you can and add those shades, uh, especially in a larger photo with, with more detail. This one's kind of a small photo. Um, yeah, that's 459 percent. So photos really only this big. Uh, but anyway, I think adding highlights and shadows and color really help bring a face to life instead of just being a flat one-dimensional. A lot of people just color it with one color like that and be done with it. Um, so I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers just on her face. And I could add more. Um, I could keep going and just add little subtle touches here and there, but I'm going to stop at that. Um, one other thing that I wanted to talk about, let me turn these off, is the, the Dodge and Burn tool. I personally don't get along with it very well. 
and I certainly don't like using it like directly on the background copy. Um, I don't like the way it works. It just is not a good thing for me. A lot of people have really good luck with it, but I don't. So I found a good alternative. Um, if I make a new layer and go to edit, fill, with, and use 50% gray, and then change that to soft light. Now, if I use the dodge tool on that layer, it doesn't affect colors. It just brings the dodging in. I'm not real good at it. I don't like it, but it does help in some cases. I much prefer to do it the old way using the white and the brown. Um, but it has its uses. So that's before and after. And I have a tendency to go overboard with it. Maybe that's why I don't like it. Um, but you can do the same thing with the burn tool. Um, you can burn in some of these shadows upper lip, under there, in here. And this is the same thing I did, but I did it with brown and white. And then another good thing about having it on a its own layer is you can adjust the opacity. So if you go overboard the way I do, then you can turn it down. Um, and you can even layer them if you want. You can make another one on top of this. Um, or you could um, merge this down into the background copy once you're happy with it. Um, but I, I don't, I don't pre, it's not my preferred way of doing it. Um, but some people may like that. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope this video was helpful.